Protesters are back on the streets of Myanmar, undeterred by a day of violence that left at least 38 people dead. The UN says the total killed since the coup a month ago is 54. More than 1,700 have been arrested. As the violence escalates, Singapore has urged its citizens to leave the country. Live to Leong Wai Kit in just a moment, but first, a look at how protesters have reacted to the bloodiest day so far. The mood is tense after the bloodiest day since the military coup. But protesters are back on the streets armed with makeshift barricades. At least 38 people were killed by security forces. Aid agencies say four children are among the dead. Funerals are being held. Large crowds have lined procession routes, singing revolutionary songs and chanting anti-coup slogans. Footage has emerged of the violence the day before, showing security forces firing into crowds with little warning. The streets are filled with smoke bombs and tear gas. Another clip shows Yangon residents hiding behind closed doors while police sweep the streets with a bulldozer. The UN has warned the military that it's likely to face strong measures in response to the escalating violence. When I also warned they will go in uh, an isolation, they, the answer was uh, we have to learn to walk with only few friends. We are used to sanctions and we, we survived those uh, sanction time in the past. Allies like China are also urging caution. Outside leader Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy Party says it will fly flags and half mast to commemorate the dead. Young Waikit joins us for more. Waikit growing concerns about escalating violence and Singapore now advising its citizens to leave the country. Yeah, that's right, Steve. Singapore is telling Singaporeans in Myanmar to consider leaving as soon as they can while it's still possible to do so. Right now, there are relief flights operating between Yangon and Singapore, but the Singapore embassy in Myanmar has always been telling Singaporeans that it cannot guarantee that the commercial flights will still continue to operate. Now, there are some 500 Singaporeans who are registered with the Singapore embassy. Of course, I'm told that the figure could be higher. Uh, most of whom who are there are businessmen. No surprise there. Singapore is the largest investor in Myanmar. I reached out to a few people to get a sense of investors there. I'm told the majority of them are still considering to stay put Many of them say they feel safe enough to work from home. There are, of course, some who are planning or who have come back to Singapore for a variety of reasons, safety, family, commitments, as well as visa issues. Now, if we take a few steps back to contextualise this, this is, excuse me, this is Singapore, like other countries, reacting to the unfolding situation in Myanmar. This comes one day after the deadliest violence uh, in the country. Now, the US had also earlier urged its uh, citizens in Myanmar not to film security officers during protests as well as at military facilities because it is illegal to do so. Now, for some context, in the past week, I've been getting a lot of tip-offs and information that the security forces are charging at people with cameras or who are filming with their phones, doing live streaming. Dozens of journalists have been arrested, a handful of whom also face charges. All right, Mary, thanks for getting us up to speed. Young Wai Kit with the latest developments out of Myanmar. Former UN experts on Myanmar have been speaking about the crisis. They formed an independent special advisory council. May Wang joins us now for more on this. May, there have been strong words from these experts for Myanmar's military. Vicious cruelty, terrorizing the people as well as dictatorial force. These are just some of the terms that the members use to describe the actions that are being taken by the military security forces over in Myanmar. More than 60 people have already died and already thousands injured. And also, the experts on the council said that the military security forces have always been acting like this towards the other ethnic citizens in other parts of the country for decades. And this time around, it only goes to show you the real colours, the true colours of the military in action during this period. Also, former UN Special Rapporteur Yang Hee Lee said that 
Previously, when she conducted investigations on human rights violations by the military against the Rohingyas, for example, she has always vowed under her mandate to call a spade a spade and to leave no stones unturned. This time around, as a member of the Special Advisory Council, she says that she will continue to do all of that and to call out the military on its actions. Earlier in a virtual press conference, she also pretty much summed up what many in the international community are describing the military leaders. The Tetma doll is trying to impose itself forcefully on the population. Let me be clear, there can be no recognition of this military junta as a legitimate government. What we are seeing now in Myanmar is definitely crimes against humanity, committed by the military and security forces against all people. May the UN Security Council is going to meet tomorrow to discuss the crisis in Myanmar. Can we expect anything concrete out of the session? Unfortunately, the answer will likely be no. Given the fact that Russia and China, both permanent members on the Security Council, have been consistently and traditionally voting against taking any actions against the Myanmar military. And also the fact that there are calls to really change the system now, to revamp the system. Yang He Lee, for example, said that she's been a harsh critic of the UN Security Council for the lack of action being taken by them. And so she says this is a great opportunity opportunity right now to tweak the system and to modernize the system in order to take care of such violations down the road. More importantly as well, one of the other members, Chris Sidorti, actually mentioned that this Security Council meeting will be a test for China. If China wants to be seen as being believable, if China wants to be treated and also taken seriously in the global power play, then they must take the right actions in order to show through their votes that they are serious about achieving peace and stability in Myanmar by doing the right thing. May, thank you very much for that. May Wong there reporting.